from around the globe. It's the Cube with digital coverage of Red Hat Summit 2020, brought to you by Red Hat. Welcome back. This is the Cube's coverage of Red Hat Summit 2020. Of course, the event happening digitally. We're bringing in the guests from where they are around the globe. Happy to welcome back to the program. And he's one of the keynote speakers. He's also a many time Cube alumni. Chris Wright is the Senior Vice President and Chief Technology Officer at Red Hat. Chris, it is uh, great to see you. And uh, we, we, we've got almost matching hats. You have a real Red Hat fedora. I've got one that the, you know, uh, Kubernetes Red Hat team, OpenShift team gives out in Europe. So um, in case anybody in the Red Hat community goes, uh, yes, I've been a longtime member uh, of, of the community. I got, you know, I think my original Red Hat uh, baseball cap probably 15 years ago. Um, but the, the, the hat that I had is, is not one of the nice felt ones. Uh, it is there. Chris, great to see you. Good to see you. All right, uh, so uh, we, we've got to wait a little bit to get your keynote, but so many topics I want to get uh, to with you. But, uh, you know, of course, as I mentioned in the open, and it, it's pretty obvious, everyone's remote uh, right now is kind of, uh, you know, special times we are living in. So bring us inside a little bit, you know, your, your organization, your group, your community, uh, you know, what, what this means and how's everybody doing? Well, I mean, it'd be, hard not to sort of acknowledge that there's a, ma a major um, global event happening right now and, and COVID's really changing how we operate, how we work. Uh, from, a, from a Red Hat perspective, our, our number one priority is just employee safety and employee health. And so we're, we, we were quick to send our folks home and have everybody to work from home. And so what's interesting from a Red Hat point of view, I think, and then even if you broaden that out to open source communities, the, the distributed nature of open source development and, and specifically the engineering teams at Red Hat are, are pretty distributed, kind of mirroring those open source communities that we participate in. So on the one hand, um, you, you can kind of say, well, things haven't changed substantially uh, in the sense of how do, we, how do we operate in upstream communities? Um, but on the other hand, people working from home, is, it's a whole new set of challenges. I mean, uh, my kids are 12 and 14, but you know, say you have toddlers, that's a real distraction. Um, or you have a working environment at home that's crowded with multiple people. I mean, it, it can really change how you approach your daily, your, your, your daily work life. Um, so creating that balance has been really important. And for our teams, we talk a lot about just think empathy, think about how you're supporting one another. Uh, and again, when you broaden that out to the, to the larger communities, I think probably a really important aspect of open source development is crossing corporate boundaries and being inclusive of such a broad set of contributors that there's a built-in resiliency associated with open source communities, which I think is fantastic. Uh, and then when you add to that sort of the, um, the enthusiasm around just doing great things, uh, there's a lot of interesting activities that are collaborative in nature, that are community-based, that are trying to address um, the COVID crisis, whether it's 3D printing of supplies or whether it's um, contact tracing applications that help uh, people understand where they've come in, uh, across COVID or anything like that. I mean, a lot of cool stuff happening that's inspired by a um, you know, real challenge to the, to the entire globe. Yeah, Chris, one of my favorite things the last few years at Summit has been, you know, talking, these, talking to companies that are going through their journey of, you know, what we usually call digital transformation. Uh, what we have always said from the research side is what separates, uh, you know, people that have successfully gone through this is that data uh, and they, they, they become data driven and data is such an important piece of what they're doing. Well, I think everyone has been getting a real crash course on data because not only businesses, but, you know, governments and, you know, the entire globe now is, you know, watching the daily data, trying to understand data sources, you know, bring us inside as to, you know, really the importance of data uh, and, you know, wh where that intersects with everything that Red Hat is. Well, the, those are great examples. I mean, it's, Sometimes a little depressing, but uh, the the notion that data is a critical part of decision making and access to quality data in real time is what helps us make better decisions, more effective decisions, and more efficient decisions. And so, um, when you when you look at the amount of data being produced, it just keeps growing. You know, it's sort of on the exponential growth curve. And when you look at the um, commensurate amount of compute power associated with all of that data, it's also growing, which is maybe an obvious statement. What it says is 
we are gathering more and more data and the degree to which we can pull meaningful insights out of that data is really how much we can impact our company's um, you know, value and differentiation. And in the context of uh, something like COVID, that means vaccine uh, discoveries and uh, you know, shortening times to field trials in, in a more uh, business context, it's talking about how quickly you can respond to your customers' needs. And we see a really dynamic shift in the workforce, all go, working from home. That puts a real strain on the infrastructure. We're here supporting infrastructure builders and the amount of data that they can collect to efficiently operate infrastructure is critical at a time when people are distributed and getting access into the lab environments is challenging. And so, you know, I think there's a, a lot to be said for the amount of data that's being produced and then how we analyze it. We think of it in terms of bringing data to applications. And historically, they kind of lived in separate, I'd call them silos, um, bringing the uh, data sources and data processing and model development all onto a common platform is a really powerful thing that's happening in the industry today, which is which is exciting. So, um, you know, we, we're bringing data to be a central actor is how I like to describe it. Yeah, well, well I'm, I'm really glad how you connected to that discussion of data to the applications because, you know, my background really is on the infrastructure side. And uh, the, the concern I have a lot of times is infrastructure people, you know, we talk about the bits and bytes, we talk about the infrastructure, but the only reason we have infrastructure is to run those applications and you know, deal with that data. Um, it, it, we're hoping you can connect the dots for us. Uh, the, the keynote that Paul gave, one of the main things he's uh, talking about is of course the open hybrid cloud. And I had a great discussion with him uh, on theCUBE. So with, with that setup of applications and data, you know, how does that intersect you know, with the, what, what Red Hat calls the open hybrid cloud uh, and what differentiates Red Hat's position there uh, from some, some of the other discussions that we hear in the industry about cloud? Well, the, the open hybrid cloud is, is a platform. I think that's the best way to think of it. And that platform, it's a, it's a cloud platform that spans different types of infrastructures. So that's public clouds, that's on-premises data centers uh, you know, that, that the enterprise owns themselves. And I think important, increasingly out to the edge. So the notion of where you deploy isn't also coupled to, oh, what platform do I have to develop to in order to do that deployment? Uh, and you know, when we talk about the edge, expanding out to the edge, that means you're getting closer to those data sources. So bringing the data in, doing the um, associated inference and making decisions close to that data where latency really can matter uh, is a big part of what that open hybrid cloud platform brings to, to the market or to our customers. And when you think about an application developer, um, typically an application developer is trying to enab you know, enable some, some behavior or feature or functionality. And the more we can drive, use data to drive the behavior or drive the functionality, the more personalized an application is, uh, the more intelligent the application is. And so the connection between data, uh, the data sources, uh, the data processing, the data science behind data cleansing and model generation and the associated models that can be easily accessed by applications that's the real power. That's the real value that we're, we're trying to help develop for our customers so that they can change their business. We actually do this internally. It's how we operate. Uh, you know, we collect data. We use data to make decisions. We use data in our uh, um, product release process. And the platform that we've created is a data processing and analytics and uh, you know, machine learning platform that we use um, internally. And we also make that externally available as an open source project, the Open Data Hub. So open and data and hybrid cloud are all intertwined at this point. Yeah, what, what, one of the things that really has been highlighted to me uh, at, at Summit this year is that connection. Uh, you know, we always knew Red Hat had, you know, strong developer uh, community out there, but, you know, you think back to Linux, Linux has ties directly into the application. Uh, you look across the portfolio and it's not the app dev team over here and the infrastructure team over here. And, you know, how do we operate all of these various pieces, you know, Ansible, uh, you know, has uh, connections into all the various roles. So I want you to just comment, you know, with kind of your, you know, CTO role and you, you look over the entire portfolio, that discussion of, you know, how roles are changing, how organizations can make sure that they're not a bunch of various functions 
uh, that aren't in sync, but uh, you know, are really coming together to help respond to the business needs and move forward uh, in the speed that is needed in today's world. Well, I think the the early stages of that were were well captured with the DevOps phrase, so bringing developers and operations closer together. Um, it's not always clear what that means, and in some cases, that uh, the the notion of a in of a platform and the notion of operating an application. And then who operates the platform? I think there, there's been some question in the industry about exactly what that means. We're thinking of it today um, to sort of stick with the, the buzzwords in the DevSecOps context, and even what I would call um, AI DevSecOps. So in data and intelligence infused DevSecOps. And the idea is developers are just trying to move rapidly. So the degree to which the underlying infrastructure is just there to support application development is the operations team's need. You know, that's what the operations team's trying to provide. Developers need, at the same time, access to tooling, to consistency from test environments through to production environments, and uh, also access to those data models that I was talking about earlier. So bringing that all together, I think, on the DevOps side or the DevSecOps side, it's how can you build a platform that gives the right business specific guidelines and um, sort of guardrails that allow developers to move as quickly as possible without getting themselves into trouble and you know, inadvertently creating a security vulnerability by pulling in um, an old dependency as, as a concrete example. So bringing these things together, I think, is, is, is what's really important. And it's a big part of what we're focused on. The, so operational side being infused with intelligence, that's data and telemetry you're gathering from at the platform level and using models to inform how you operate the system. And then if you go up a level to the application development sort of CI CD pipeline, uh, where can you make intelligent recommendations to developers as they're pulling in dependencies or even writing code uh, and then give easy access to the data science workflow to intersect so that what you're delivering is a well-integrated model with an application that you know, has a life cycle and a maintenance associated with it that is well understood. Yeah, so, so Chris, you know, we've watched, this is the seventh year we've had the cube at, at Red Hat Summit. Of course, Red Hat itself has a large portfolio, uh, but not only Red Hat, but you know, the open source communities, there are so many, you know, countless projects out there and you have a huge partner ecosystem. You were just talking a bunch about DevOps, you know, I've got sitting at my desk, uh, you know, one of those charts that shows, you know, DevOps tooling and it, here's right. some of the platforms and here's all the various pieces. And it's like, you know, I think there's only, you know, 50 or 80 different tools on that, but how's Red Hat and the community overall, how, do, how are you helping customers, you know, deal with this, you know, challenging world is, you know, we've got the paradox of choice out there. Um, it, you know, we understand that, you know, everybody needs something a little bit different, but how are we helping to give a little bit of structure and guidance in uh, the, 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 uh, the, the ever-changing world? Well, I think it's one of the values of pulling content together. Um, if you think of a, a set of, of components being brought together as curation, uh, then, then we're, we're helping curate the content. And assembling pieces together, it turns out, is a, is a lot of work, especially when you want to lifecycle manage those components together. Uh, so one basic thing that we're doing is bringing together an entire distribution of content. So it's not just a single, it's not just Linux. It's not just Kubernetes, it's Linux and Kubernetes engineered together with a set of supporting tooling for logging and monitoring and CI pipelines and all of that we bring together in a context that we would call um, opinionated or prescriptive. What we also focus on is understanding that every enterprise has, a, has its own legacy and history and set of investments that they've made. So that process where we bring together an opinionated stack also needs to incorporate the flexibility. So where can we plug in um, a CI pipeline that your, your enterprise already has? Uh, or where can we plug in your monitoring logging tools? So that kind of flexibility allows us to bring together some best of breed components that we're finding in the open source communities with uh, flexibility to bring a whole set of ecosystem partners. And you know, if we go back to that Open Data Hub conversation, there are a lot of data-centric tools uh, that we put in the Open Data Hub open source project, we have commercial partners that can support uh, things like, uh, say, Spark as a, as a concrete example or, or TensorFlow. And so, you know, combine those, 
Uh, those are open source projects, but they're not coming from Red Hat. They're coming from our ecosystem partners. Combine that all together into something that's engineered to work together. Uh, and you're taking a lot of the friction out of the system so that developers can just move quickly. All right, so Chris, give us a little bit of preview. Uh, what, what are people gonna see in the keynote? And you know, there's some people that are gonna be watching this interview live, but uh, others will be catching it after. So um, I believe Edge is one of the pieces we'll be touching on uh, in, in the keynote, but uh, give us a little bit of uh, what, what we can expect. Well, what I, you'll have to come see the keynote to really get the, the, the full, the full experience, but what we're trying to, to talk through is how data is really fundamentally changing business. And if and we talk through that, that sort of storyline, um, starting with how it impacts Red Hat. So, you know, at one level, we're an enterprise, we, we have our own business needs. Uh, we use data to drive how we operate. Um, we also see that the platforms that we're building are really helpful for our customers to harness the value of data uh, and change their own business. And in the context of doing that, we get to take a look at some uh, ways where those business changes have industry-wide effects. Uh, you know, there, We talk about things like 5G uh, and artificial intelligence and where these things come together, especially in edge computing, really interesting space where these things all kind of converge. And uh, you know, so kind of that, that broad, broad storyline of data, something that we use to change how we operate, something that we build is from a platform point of view, help our customers change how they operate, and ultimately those changes have major impacts across the industry, which is, uh, was, which is pretty exciting, pretty cool. Yeah, I, I'm curious, Chris. Uh, you know, I, I think back a few years ago, I, I would have been interviewing you about like uh, NFB uh, and right. many of the themes it feels like we were talking about there um, were really setting the table for the discussion we've been having for 5G. Is is that? You know, do you agree with that? You know what what you know, what's kind of the same and different from what we might have been looking at five years ago? It's it's very much, and I, and I love that question because it touches on something that I think is really important. It's very much an evolution. Um, and so, in the tech world, we talk so much about disruption, and I think we overplay disruption. I think what's interesting is technology evolution, um, just consistently changing and moving forward gives rise at points in time to really interesting convergence of change that can be disruptive. So as a concrete example, um, NFV historically was about really improving the operational efficiencies of the service providers building networks and helping them move more rapidly so they could introduce new services. Most of that was focused on 4G, and most of that was focused on the core of the network. Today, we're introducing 5G across the industry. The discussions are moving technology-wise into where do containers fit into this new world. And the discussion at the network level is not only in the core, but all the way out to the edge. And then when you look at the edge, where you have a portion of the network operating as software, you have a platform like OpenShift that can also host enterprise or consumer-facing edge applications. So this is really all of those early stages of NFV are culminating in a, in a place today where the technology supports total software infrastructure for the network and utilizing that same cloud that you're running uh, using to run the network to power enterprise or consumer facing applications. That's pretty far away from where we were in the early days of NFV, very much an evolution. And then if you take it one step further and say 4G, smart devices and cloud computing gave rise to a set of disruptive businesses. 10 years ago, those businesses did not exist. Today, we can't imagine life without them. 5G device proliferation, so not just smartphones, but a whole set of new devices, and edge computing are the ingredients that give rise to that same next wave of innovation where 10 years from now, we can't really imagine what are the businesses that in 10 years, we won't be able to imagine our lives without. So we're at a really interesting inflection point and it's, it's partially through this evolution of technology. I think it's really exciting. All right, Chris, uh, last question for you. Uh, there, there's always so many different pieces going on. You know, Red Hat's really striking a, a nice balance. There's not really as much of the hoopla and, and announcements, but you know, 
so much, you know, everything that Red Hat does is built on open source. So, you know, there's always things I run across. It's like, oh, I need to, you know, look down the rabbit hole a little bit. And what was that Quarkus <laughs> thing? I think I'd heard that word before, where all of the projects at the CNCF uh, were, you know, Red Hat's involved in. So, you know, in, in the last minute here, give us, you know, any areas where people said, hey, you know, go Google this, go look up this, you know, project, uh, other cool things that, you know, you and your team are working on that you want to make sure to highlight. Well, you, you've mentioned one, which is Quarkus. And oftentimes we talk about infrastructure. I think it's a really cool project that is developer focused. It's, it's in the Java space and it's really bringing Java from an enterprise development platform into a modern language that can be used to build cloud native applications or even serverless functions. Uh, I think serverless is a critical space. So we've been talking quite, for quite some time about all the ways serverless can be impactful. We're at a place now where Knative as a project is maturing and the, the kind of world around it is getting more sophisticated. So we have a serverless offering as part of, um, part of the OpenShift platform. Uh, so you know, making sure you're paying attention to what's happening in the Knative space, I think it is, is really important. Um, there's a whole new set of um, management challenges that will be in the security and, and multi-cluster space. Uh, we're bringing those uh, we're bringing technology to bear in this space, and as Red Hat, we will bring those out as open source projects. So, looking for the open source communities around uh, where where you hear things like ACM or advanced container management for multi cluster managed environments, which are the norm at this point. Uh, you know, those are some examples of things that I think are important. And then there's a world of stuff that's data focused. There's all of the data science tools. Uh, you know, too many to really enumerate, but that I think is an example where open source is leading the space, leading the industry in terms of where all where all those tools are developed and how how they're developed and the kind of access developers have to data science tools. All right. Well, thank you so much, Chris Wright. Uh, always a pleasure to catch up with you, and uh, definitely looking forward to hearing your keynote. All right. Thank you. All right, uh, lots more coverage. Check out the cube.net. You can see all the interviews after they've gone out live. They will be on demand. All those projects Chris mentioned, uh, I've had deep dives on, on all of them. So uh, also hit up Chris or myself on Twitter. If you have any follow-up, always love to hear the feedback. I'm Stu Miniman, and as always, thank you for watching the cube.